Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to go through the process I use to make this shot here. Pretty simple shot, simple Photoshop to do. I think the biggest thing is in the prep of the photo and I'll walk you through what I did here. So overall it's this front image here is two HDR brackets. The first one is for the top of the car for a polarization for that. The second one is a polarization HDR bracket for the side of the car. And then in the back, this is another HDR bracket. I ended up not needing to do a two different polarizations on that shot. And then essentially what I did is just open them in Photoshop and then mask them together into one image. So the biggest thing for me was making sure that the composition looked good and I'll show you how I did that. First of all, here is kind of the set of what the first bracket looks like. Here's the end HDR merged image. So for anybody that's new to the channel, essentially what an HDR image is, is you expose for the lights and the darks, you take frames in between there. So you'll have your your middle exposure, if you look on the back of your camera, this is zero. This tells this is what the camera thinks is a perfect exposure. And what it tries to do is it tries to find 50% gray. So as you can see, the asphalt's really dark. The sky's really bright. It tries to find a happy medium right in the middle of those. So what we want to do with our, with our HDR bracket is we want to underexpose for the brighter areas, so the sky. So all that detail in the clouds, we want to be able to keep that. But then on the same side, everything that's in the shadows, so for example, like the wheels and behind the grill and inside the lights and things like that, you want to be able to keep that detail. So that's what HDR allows us to do. So here's our first image. Here's our second polarized image. And you can see the difference in the tone and the reflection of the car you can see what that polarizer does for us so here the top of the image is really washed out the windshield you can't see through it it's reflecting everything from the sky but on the side it's cutting out all of those side reflections and this window it's cutting out those so it's much darker it's much more even tones and if we click back on this one you'll see the top change so You'll see the top now we can see through that windshield. It's black. It's no longer reflecting back the sky. But on the other hand, if you look at our side image, it's now reflecting the side of the image. And also the windshield is now reflecting the sky. So it's turned more of a whitish color. So those are our two images that we're going to use. Now here is the second image, the back car if you will. And one thing that I did, so obviously we're shooting this on a tripod. What I did is I put a rock, I actually put two rocks right where the wheels were. And if you look here and you look at this shot, essentially what I did is I wanted to be able to see in the camera where the wheels and the overhang of the car would be so I could place the second frame or the car in the back to have a good composition. I wanted to cover maybe a little bit of this bumper, but I really wanted to see this wheel. I wanted to see this wheel and the two images kind of just V into that background. So that's kind of what we ended up with. I did shoot two polarizations with this. I ended up just using the one. I just ended up using this one. I felt like the reflections on the car were fine. So I brought three total images into Photoshop and let's do that now. So we're going to click on this one. We're going to command click this one and command click this one. We'll right click and we'll go to edit in open as layers in Photoshop. And so now Photoshop is going through. It's opening all of those images into a stack. So there'll be individual layers. And then we will go through and align those images. Again, we were on a tripod, so there shouldn't be any movement. But if there is, we'll see it. 
I think we're actually okay here. Um, a test that you can do in this top image, if you click on difference, you can see the more black you have, the more lined up it is. So if we take our V tool, we can shift this around and you can see if you are aligned or not. And I'm just going to go off of that pole in the back. So those two are pretty aligned. Let's look at the one underneath. We'll change this to difference. And we're going to move this bottom one because we've already moved the top one to match. All right, so I think we're pretty aligned there. I think we're good. So let's go ahead and change this layer back to normal. Let's turn back on this top layer and we'll turn it on to normal. And so now what we want to do is we want to decide how much of this Let's bring this layer above. So this is our side. This is our side polarization. And right now we want to figure out how much of this we want to bring back. Sometimes this side polarization can get really flat and sometimes the reflections maybe look a little bit better. Um, so you just kind of have to judge how much or how little you want to bring in of that. So let's go ahead and put a black layer mask on that. I'm just going to hit Option or Alt and click the layer mask. And we're going to grab our brush tool, just a normal, normal, fully soft brush. We're going to paint in white. So we're going to flip these colors and we're going to come right in here and we're just going to paint on the side of the car. Uh, let's start up here on the window. So we'll just paint that in. And then maybe we can bring the flow way down. And let's go in here and just paint some of this in. Maybe so we don't get rid of all of those reflections, but we just cut them back. Just to help those body lines show without reflecting all of everything that's on here on the side. So before and after, one thing I try to make sure that I do though is I really don't like the way the wheels look when you have a polarizer on the side. So generally I use that from the top polarization. Those reflections actually help. It really pops the outside of the wheel and then the spokes of the wheel. So those are our two images right there. Now let's go ahead and bring this one up top. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to hit Option or Alt and click our layer mask to make that black mask. And then we're going to go in and we're going to paint our car. So I believe we're right around here. Let's bring our flow all the way up for now. And we're just going to come in here and we're going to paint right around it. Good thing and bad thing. So when I took the shot, I locked in focus right here on the corner of the headlight. And I put it into manual focus. So the focus for everything else in the frame should be the exact same. What, what I found after the fact is I kind of wish that the back car was a little sharper. So I could have done a couple things. I could have refocus onto the car and then had to deal with some of the transition here. Or I could have shot at a little higher f-stop and hopefully kept both of the cars in focus. I really wanted this um, depth of field though, so that's why I shot that the way that I did. I kind of wish that 
again this car in the back was a little bit more in focus but that's what next time's for right and so we have that mask in as you can see I kind of went a little too far so we're gonna make this brush a little bit smaller we're gonna go switch our colors using the X key go back to black and we're gonna come and paint this back corner in and then we're gonna zoom out just check and make sure we don't have anything funny but there we are so that's the base of the image so now that we have those two put together, we can start working on color and some cleanup and things like that. So let's go ahead, since we have this, let's make a stamped visible layer. So I'm gonna hit Command, Option, Shift, and E. We're committing to this, we didn't make any mistakes. And we are gonna go into Camera Raw and get our initial kind of color grade. So if you were doing a single image edit or just a plain HDR and you didn't have to use any compositing like this, this is what I normally do in like Lightroom, for example. So the camera raw feature or the camera raw filter is basically the exact same panels that you get in Lightroom. Working from top to bottom, I'm gonna pull down a gradient here. We wanna get some of that detail back from the sky. So I'm just going to pull back the exposure a little, maybe pull back some of the highlights. We don't really need it saturated as much. Those are probably fine. Maybe we push some blues in there. I think it looks better with a little bit more blue. And then let's do the same thing on the bottom. So we'll just click on our gradient tool again. We don't want any of those other settings, so let's just double click exposure and then we'll pull this up again. And maybe we want this foreground to be a little bit darker. <clears throat> and then let's bring some attention to the cars themselves. So we'll pull out a gradient here. And instead of going down, we wanna go up a little bit. And then we also wanna bring the shadows up. So we want to be able to pull some of that detail out of the wheels. And maybe we want to add some clarity. And I think on this side, we want to do the same thing with this car. And maybe that needs a little bit more shadows just because it's a little further back. And maybe we add a little bit of contrast. And I'm pretty good on that. I do want the red in those tail lights to pop. So we're gonna come over here to the saturation. We're gonna pull the red saturation up and maybe pull the luminance down just a little bit. Maybe we do the same thing with the greens, just in the trees, and maybe even with the yellows too. So I think, that's, I think that's good. We'll go ahead and click OK. Again, that's something that I would have done in, in Lightroom. So if I went into Photoshop from Lightroom, this is kind of where we would be. Working on the car, something that happened when I did the HDR shot is these LED lights. I think it tried figuring out what the differences were and it basically just made a big gray mess. So let's go in and clean that up really fast. I'm just gonna take a brush tool. Let's make a new layer here. Just make this smaller and I'm just gonna paint in white. We're just gonna paint right over that. Same thing with this one. And you can use the pen tool to make a mask or you can just paint right on here. And this doesn't look super great right now, but I'll show you how we're gonna fix it. So if we zoom out, if we zoom out to here, that looks fine, right? 
but we want to go in and we want to add some noise to that so we're going to go into noise add noise when you paint just on an image like if we zoom way in here you can see we have some noise in the image here this is just pure pixels so if you ever go in and you paint and you blend you want to add some noise to it it just helps it look a little bit more real and then i think we can play with some blending modes to see if we can get something that looks a little bit better that lets some of the some of that background come through so i think i think screen looks fine and maybe i come in here and just clean this edge up just a little bit and I think the good thing is on these lights, if you go a little bit outside and it's a little bit blurry because we're using a soft brush, I think in this case that's actually probably a good thing. It just shows that some of that light leaked past the outside of the housing here. And again, we're zoomed in so far that once you zoom out, it all looks fine. But and if that's too much, you can bring back the opacity a little bit. But it just, it looks much better than the gray, the artifacting that we got from the HDR. So I think the next thing, let's go in and let's clean up these light poles. Let's make a duplicate layer of this. So we're just gonna, we're gonna see how the content aware fill tool works. And I found that it works a little bit better if you break up the image from something else. So we're gonna come in here and we're just gonna kinda cut this off and clone this area out a little bit and then we're gonna do the same thing over here. You're almost just saying Photoshop, this is the area and there's a nice break for you. So you, it knows what you want the software to get rid of. So let's just go and draw a selection right around here. And we'll go up to edit, fill, and we're gonna make sure that this says content aware. We're gonna click okay. And hit command D. And you can see that it did a pretty good job. There's some stuff here. Let's see how we do back here. So again, same thing, just a loose selection around it. Edit fill, content aware fill, and Photoshop did a pretty good job for us. So I think right here we have a little bit of a line. So to get rid of that, we can probably just take the patch tool, draw right around there and pull that over. And then maybe in here, do the same thing. And then over here, maybe the same. And now let's get rid of that pole so it's not in the trees. And then this is just essentially kind of getting some random stuff from both sides. It doesn't have to be perfect because it will look like a, it'll look like a branch if there's some stuff around it. And we'll call that good. I think back here, I, I did a terrible job when I was cloning that stuff out. So let's see if we can fix some of this. And I'm just making it worse. There we go. I think that's a little bit better. Again, it's so small that you probably wouldn't see it. So before, after, before, after, just getting rid of those makes a pretty big difference. And, you know, I've gotten some comments before like, oh, hey, why don't you shoot where they're, you know, sometimes sometimes you can't do anything about light poles and telephone lines and things like that. And that's why Photoshop gave us the content aware tool and the clone stamp and things like that. So this looks much better. Yeah, it's not accurate as to what's there, but it's it's how I like my images to look. So 
if you like it, do it. If you don't, don't. But I've gotten some comments in the past about, oh, why do you... Well, that's why. I think it looks cooler, so... Um, let's just go in here and clean up some of this stuff on the ground. Again, um, I'm just using the healing brush tool, the spot healing brush. I found that in the, la the latest releases of Photoshop, this tool actually does a really good job. Um, it does a good job of sampling what's around it, which used to not be the case if you use some older... Photoshop versions. And we'll just go in here and clean some of this stuff up. And maybe over into here. And now let's clean up some of the stuff on the car. So my grill is notorious for catching leaves. And they just stay there. And a lot of times when I'm shooting, I just, I can't get them out. They're just stuck. So I have to do it in post. And then this sweet thing is I was on the highway the other day and a chunk of tire popped up and left a nasty mark all over the front of my wrap there, which won't come out. So we're going to touch that up in Photoshop too. So now we're just going to go through here, get rid of some of this. Again, still just using that spot healing brush tool. And I think rather than having these trees here, I think we can try to get rid of some of this and just bring them down. I don't know how well this is gonna work. We may have to use the clone stamp tool for this. Yeah, I think let's switch over really fast. So just the clone stamp, we'll come in here. Let's get rid of some of this. Let's try to clean it up. Make it just look a little bit smoother. And then we'll come down here and kind of do the same thing and just Just help the car look a little bit cleaner. Uh, going around, let's see if we have anything else we need to fix. So I think overall that's pretty good. Let's make a stamped visible layer. And I'm gonna hit Command S just to save that really fast. And we're gonna come up here and go to Nick Collections, Nick Effects Pro 4. And since Nick came out with their new deal, they keep doing this. Um, I don't see a reason to upgrade right now. I don't think they really changed anything. I think they just made it more stable with a new operating system. And if you watched my previous video on the kind of shortcut of how to fix that, I think it works fine and I don't see a reason to update right now. Maybe in the future I will, but as of right now, I, I'm pretty good. Um, so I like to check this white neutralizer. Something that I found with gray cars, white cars, and silver cars is they cast a lot of that blue back from the, the sky good or bad. I don't necessarily like it on the car. I like the car to show more of the true color of what it is. So I generally take that out. So I'll run this. So I think that's good. I think we still need to bring up the brightness of the cars a little bit. And we can do that in Camera Raw or we can do that with a curved layer. So we can kind of bring up this middle zone here. And then we can just make, we can hit Command I to invert that selection. We can grab our brush tool. Again, same brush that we were using earlier, just completely soft. And maybe we bring the flow down a little bit. So we build and then we wanna paint in white. So I'm gonna hit X and then we can just come in here and paint over the cars. 
And if you want more, you can come in here and you can punch this up. And you can see kind of the before and after. Um, one thing with this though, is you just wanna make sure you watch out for those halos that go around the car. If you get a little bit outside the lines, you might get some of that, it might spill onto the background. So let's make a new layer. In my last video, if you watch the Camaro edit, I'm uh, kind of obsessed with this little smoke brush tool. So go watch that video, check out the link um, to another YouTuber's video on how this brush is made, but I just, I think it's fun and it helps add some atmosphere to the background. So what I'm gonna do is paint on this new layer. I have the brush here, we're gonna make it a little bit bigger. I don't want that black. I want like a whitish, grayish color. We're just gonna come in here, just paint back on some of this. And then we're gonna lower that opacity way down. And we're gonna put a mask on. And now we're gonna come back over, grab our normal brush, and we're gonna paint in black. So we're gonna hit X, and we're gonna get this off of the car, also off of here. down just a little bit. Just add a little bit of dust. I think with um, shooting in the desert, I think it's kind of cool to add some atmosphere back there and make it look like the kind of the wind's blowing, kicking up some dust. So I think we're just about done. I think I'll make another stamp visible layer and then just go in camera raw one more time. Go through the different settings. So I do want to add some more clarity to the image. I also think I want to darken down this foreground just a little bit more. So let's zero these out, bring this back down. I also actually want to bring out the saturation of this. I think that looks cool. Um, let's go over to the sharpening panel. Let's go add a decent amount of sharpening. I'll hold down the Option or Alt key and slide the mask. We just wanna make sure that we are sharpening the edges of the car. So I think that's about a good zone. And then I'm just gonna bring up the noise reduction just a little bit. There's not really any noise in the image, but it just kind of helps even things out in the in the tones. And then, I don't know if we need any vignetting or not. Eh, maybe that looks cool. All right, I think that that's good, so we'll click OK. And now last thing, let's go in and not crop our image like that. Let's crop it here. So because of the little bit of alignment, we need to crop in a little bit. And I think I wanna bring this front spoiler. I like the front of the car, this front edge to be straight. So I usually bring it in if you're worried about the edges here, a good tip is you can click this content aware deal. And what that will do is see how we're outside the lines now. So it's gonna give you an extra little bit of real estate if you wanna turn it. Otherwise it will keep you in there. If for some reason your crop looks a little bit funny or you're close to the edge here when you need to go crop, you can click that and Photoshop will go through and it will do some magic. In fact, here, let's look at this. So we'll acknowledge that. And it'll go through and it'll, similar to what we did with the light poles, it'll 
content aware fill those areas for you based on the areas around it so it will match and like 98% of the time it does a pretty good job so I mean as you can see down here it kinda kinda messed up a little bit but up here and over here it did a pretty good job down here is the only area that was kinda bad so I'm just gonna go ahead and crop that in just a little bit I don't need that extra space so I'll just come in like there we'll hit enter and then I think the last thing um, I'm kind of addicted to this right now too and I'm sure soon it will wear off but I like going into this gradient tool here clicking on the second one um, and clicking on this second one here so this says foreground to transparency and I just come out here and I pull a little just a little gradient there just adds a little spice to the corner a little like sun light leak kind of thing I think it just helps add some spice to it so from there we can go ahead and hit file export I'm still using the same web settings that I've always used and what I do is I change the width to 2048 I have the quality set on 80 and I just save it out and then you can upload it to Instagram or Facebook or whatever and I found that those settings actually work pretty well so that's it for today's video hopefully you enjoyed this video hopefully you learned some things I've been wanting to do this kind of dual car photo for a while finally got around to doing it and I I love the effect I think I'm probably gonna start doing this a little bit more and as you can see it really doesn't take that much longer to set up generally when you're gonna shoot cars you're gonna shoot the front and the back anyways and if you have the ability to uh, just move the car a little bit you can set up something similar to this so until next time, take care.